Welcome to the Business Voice, presented by the Hillsborough Chamber of Commerce on 1360 KUIK, the voice of Washington County. Welcome to the Business Voice. I'm Deanna Palm, President of the Hillsborough Chamber of Commerce. And I'm Julie Ames, Vice President for the Chamber. And here we are. April 11th, and we have with us here today in the studio, Julian Gray, Executive Director of one of my absolute favorite places in the world, Northwest Museum of Rocks and Minerals, right here in Hillsborough, Oregon. Welcome, Julian. Thank you. So tell people why it's Deanna's favorite place. <laughs> <laughs> well, you'll have to tell me that, but <laughs> it's um, the Rice Museum is really a, a remarkable institution here in the community, and, and it's one of the ten finest museums in in the country uh, of its of its sort. Uh, it's um, you list off the museums, and when you list those museums, the museums we're talking about are the Smithsonian, the American Museum of Natural History, the Perot Museum in Dallas. So it's it's a pretty pretty good company that we keep. But we have a lot of fun events as well and a lot going on, uh, world-class exhibits, and uh, it's a really beautiful museum in a beautiful setting. And it's much, but it's <clears throat> different in terms of the museum feel because it's uh, it's, it's in a, a home, for one thing. It's in a home, right. and it's comfortable, and it's homey, and it's and then there's it's mixed with the beautiful outdoors, and um, and it is it's one of the absolute best assets that Hillsboro has, and um, the Rice Museum is just like you said, it's known internationally. Right. Um, so talk a little bit about because I know that it's on it's on the list for you know almost every school child that goes through the Hillsborough School District ha- it's like they have to be there. there there's a time that they at some point in time they're going to be passing through the Rice Museum talk a little bit about you know what 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 a what a student would see or what a visitor would see when they walk in in the doors of the museum well there are a lot of different experiences <clears throat> the um we have a lot of school groups. We had 11,000 uh, school children every year. Come it's a lot of kids. Yeah, it is. We've got 72 kids, fourth graders in the, in the building right now. Um, and the experience is different for the school kids versus the average visitor. Uh, the school kids come through, and we don't just let them go in the museum. We have uh, hosts who take them around and show them things and make sure they're learning as well as having fun. And, uh, and then when the average visitor comes in off the street, you're right. They come into warm. Uh, the the setting, it's nice, you know, beautiful setting in the woods, this beautiful home that Richard and Helen Rice created, and um, just lots of features. People love the home. If you took the rock collection out of the, the home, it would be house. a museum, too. So. Yes. And so you mentioned you mentioned about the the folks that actually created the museum, um, the the Rice family. Right. Talk a little bit about that history in terms of how it got started, and then you know where we're at today in terms of the family involvement. Okay, yeah, Richard and Helen Rice they got their start in rock collecting uh, on Agate Beach here in Oregon, and they picked up some average brown pebbles, but they looked a little different, and they took them into a rock shop and had them polished. And when they did, they couldn't believe the transformation in the stones. They were just brought out the beauty, and they could see the banding in the agate, and said this is something they wanted to do. They wanted to be involved in, and so they they got collected, uh, got interested in rock collecting in a big way. And the museum is is the outreach of you know the the legacy of that that love that was uh, kindled on Agate Beach. They got involved in every rock club in the area. They helped found um, the Oregon Agate Mineral Society, the Tualatin Valley Gem and Mineral Society. Um, They also got involved in the regional federations and went to every mineral show. They exhibited uh, their exhibits, won awards. Um, Our curator last year won three awards, too, so we're continuing that tradition. Um, the, they built this dream home in 1953 to house their collection. And in the basement of the home is a room that was originally the only room for their rock collection. So they had built-in bookcases around the wall uh, that housed the collection. The collection grew and it took over. And as the children, the three daughters moved out, and then eventually the Rices ate, um, got up in years and had to move out of the house and eventually passed away in 1997, the home, the the collection took over all the bedrooms, and now the bedrooms are galleries, and um, the dining room, for instance, is our fossil gallery, and um, and then even Mr. Rice's garage became uh, became the Northwest Gallery, where we highlight 
all the minerals that you find in the Northwest and things that are related to that. Um, as the Rices knew that they were not going to be a part of the future of the museum, that they would um, be passing on, they wanted to leave a legacy. And one of their daughters, Charlene Harvey, and um, uh, son-in-law, Bill Harvey, worked to uh, to get the museum in, um, instituted as a, a nonprofit a public institution. And so they did that in 1996, a year before Richard and Helen uh, passed away. Um, in the last few years, we've been able to get the museum listed on the National Register of Historic Homes because of the beautiful wood, uh, Merle wood that's used in the building, the lo uh, local craftsmen, the interesting design and features of the home. And last year, we became an affiliate of the Smithsonian Institution. So we're um, continuing to build uh, on that legacy that the Rice has started in the 1930s. Wow, what a great story. And I think that that's what... When you have that sort of backdrop of, of understanding the passion and the drive for leaving a legacy. So um, I, I really think that they would be so pleased to see how, how it, where, it's, where the museum is at today and that it still carries their name. I love that. And I like the alliance and um, the relationship with the Smithsonian. I mean, it's, uh, there's not very many museums that can claim fame to that. No, they're only so, we're one of three in Oregon. So. There you have it. Um, I think that's awesome. And so how did you come to, to discovering the museum and get to become the executive director? Well, the museum, I've known about the museum for, for decades, and I go to uh, some of the larger mineral shows in Tucson and Denver, and these are the largest mineral shows in America. And so I met the curator, I knew Charlene Harvey before I came out here. I came out um, 11 years ago and took a tour of the museum, so I was familiar with the collection and the people at the museum. Um, and, um, and then two years ago, uh, when I went to the Tucson Jim and Merrill show, I learned that there was going to be a vacancy at the museum. And I thought, this is something, I want to be a part of this. And I had been working at another institution in my home state in Georgia, but I wanted to be a part of, of this museum. And um, this was a great collection, great people. Um, I met with some of the staff. The staff were awesome. And I thought, there's, um, there's a good team here, and I think I can work with them, and I wanted to be a part of that. And Plus, it's in Oregon. It's Oregon, right? <laughs> Excellent. So you've been here how long? Um, exactly two years. Well, yeah. welcome. And, <laughs> Thank uh, you. So, and um, tell me a little bit about what you do at the museum. I know you're the executive director, but what does that really entail? Are you involved with, you know, setting up um, the the exhibits and all of that? Actually, we have uh, um, we have a great curator, Leslie Moclock, who takes care of the exhibits and the collection. Um, so uh, what I do day to day, I'm sort of the CEO or manager of the museum. So I run the business end. I uh, help with the scheduling, do the outreach um, in the community and um, in development. That's a big part of my job. Right. So it's, it's really running the museum like a business. Right, um, so. right. It, even though it's a nonprofit, which has its own, you know, business. I mean, it's a business. So that, uh, that doesn't mean we don't need to make money. It's no, just, it's just a tax status, isn't <laughs> right. it? That's what I always say status, to people right. as well. We still need to make money. <laughs> right, right. So so what kind of events and classes and activities go on at the museum that um, that maybe, you know, are open to the public that mm -hmm. they, if they're interested? We have four really big events uh, during the year. Um, we already had uh, Mystery Mineral Day where we have experts, including two of our board members, um, participate in this. And we had some local experts on meteorites, uh, gems, uh, minerals, fossils come in and identify treasures that people bring in uh, to the museum. And so we help them and help educate them on what they are, where they came from. Um, just before Easter, we had Thunder Egg Stravaganza. I so. love that. <laughs> yes. It's, our, it's the Rock Hound's take on Easter. Um, so we, um, the Thunder Egg is, of course, the state, gems, uh, state rock of, of Oregon. And so... Kids would go out on the grounds and find plastic eggs of different colors, and they bring them in, and then they would re, re, um, redeem them for a, a thunder egg that hasn't been opened. And then we have uh, volunteer rock hounds there that cut them open, and so the kids get to be the first ones to see what's inside of the thunder egg. So they love it. How I'm sure they do. I yeah. mean, how fun is that? That's awesome. We have um, meteorite and Mr. Uh, Mr. Uh, meteorite and family fun day coming up June 4th, and then our big event uh, is August 6th and 7th. 
uh, the first weekend of August, we always have summer festival and we'll have uh, rock dealers, um, rock gem jewelry um, dealers on the grounds. Uh, it's a fair. So people can come out. Uh, we have reduced admission uh, that day and people can come out and buy stones and learn from from rock hounds. Happens to coincide this year with the Oregon International Air uh, show, so oh it'll goodness. be a good place to come and hang out and watch the show. Oh, there you go. Well, that is, and you know, speaking of like the what's happening in Hillsboro, so there's been a bit of construction around your your property. Mm-hmm. Is that are we kind of through with all that, or is it still on, uh, ongoing? You know, I love that question because um, you'd think that it really would have had a, a negative impact on our business, and. Um, we were able uh, at about the same time to get a sign uh, finally on Highway 26 going westbound so we could catch all the traffic going out yes. to the coast. And um, we also had good signage. The Oregon Department of Transportation helped us with that. Um, <clears throat> and then we were able to get Groveland, uh, Groveland Road reconnected with Helvetia Road. Uh, and um, during that period, there was one period where where the actually Helvetia Road was cut during Summer Festival last year. So it was our biggest event, and we had to detour around that. And the Washington Roads Department was awesome. They helped us. Uh, they put information on their website that we could direct people to, help them get out there. The end result, our social media, the signs, all of the above, our in, we had an increase in attendance last year of 17%. So, so you're looking for more road construction. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, 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 no. We're done with that. It's over. But, it, but you're right. I mean, sometimes it's a little bit of an inconvenience that helps amplify, right. you know, the, the your name and your presence. And people are like, I never even knew that existed. Right. Which always breaks my heart when I hear that. What do you mean you don't know the Rice Museum? I hear that Ex- all the time. I know. So, just, you're just like, where you been? Living under a rock? <laughs> <laughs> yep. <That's> my, <laughs> Most of my friends have. Do. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. So this is very exciting. Um, talk a little bit about you know what it costs to come to go in, what your hours are, how the you know is it always open to the public? What just that sort of basic information? Okay, um, we have kind of odd hours during the week. We're uh, open Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday from one to five. Uh, the reason for the the hours are in the morning we have the school children in right. there. So if we have a school tour, maximum of 120 kids, it will be a little crowded with the public in there. So so we, the, volu- the noise volume, too. Right. Yeah. And so we reserve uh, public hours for the afternoon during the week. Um, since I've been there, we've opened up to 10 to 5 Saturday and Sunday. So we have more uh, extended hours on the weekends. Uh, admission for adults is uh, $10 uh, for, for adults, and it goes down from there. So I think that's uh, pretty much a bargain, really. Absolutely. Yeah, so. and, and you can spend hours there. Yes. Yeah, yes. it takes um, – just to see everything once uh, takes about two hours. Wow. Yeah. Wow, what a great, great afternoon adventure to do. And then, you know, the summertime comes. Uh, Tell us again, you've got um, your big event is in August 6th and 7th. 6th and 7th. I'm actually taking note of that. I don't think I've ever been to that event. You need to come. Um, And I do. Yes, I need to be there. And um, and and talk talk a little bit about your social media and your website and where folks can go if they're interested in getting more information. RiceNorthwestMuseum.org. That's our website, and that's the hub for everything. Uh, You can link to our Facebook page on there. Uh, Please like us on Facebook. On our website, you can also, in the lower right, you'll see a place where you can follow us. Click on that, enter your email, and you'll get updates uh, when we add information to our website. Um, we have um, Twitter and um, Instagram accounts, uh, Rice NW Museum, so you can follow us and retweet and do all those great social media things. I think that that's um, one of the big things that's helped and get the word about, out about the museum in the last couple of years as well. Absolutely. So do you have, like, um, memberships that somebody can, you know, a family might do, a join or and that sort of thing? We do. Uh, we, we have family memberships starting at $50, and we have some great benefits in addition to um, – unlimited admission to the museum uh, dur- uh, for, a, for an entire year. We are a part of the Portland, Attract- uh, Portland Attraction Marketing Alliance. Um, and so members who join the Rice Museum will, uh, we're rotating uh, admission to uh, participating institutions around the city. So for instance, you can get in the Evergreen Avi- uh, Air and Space Museum, uh, the Oregon Zoo, um, Portland Children's Museum, any number of attractions around the city uh, during one month of the year. And of course, uh, in, uh, I believe it's May, we're going to welcome those members to um, to the Rice Museum as well. So it's it's been a big boon. And I love that about Oregon. It's one of the things, you know, all these 
nonprofits and businesses help each other. And I collaborate. Just love yes. And it makes perfect sense because yeah. if you're, you know, a family that's looking for, you know, activities to do with your kids and, um, you know, it's a great way to, to explore, you know, different parts of our region um, on a monthly basis and, and expose your, your family and your kids to all sorts of, you know, culture and ideas. And, um, you know, I mean, from zoo animals to mm-hmm. rocks, you mm-hmm. know, I mean, come on, only in Oregon, right? Right. Julian, thank you so much for being with us here um, today. Truly appreciate it. And looking forward to my next visit at the Rice Northwest Museum of Rock and Minerals right here in Hillsborough, Oregon. Great. Thanks. Thank you. Enjoyed it.